Certainly. Great, we're starting. Okay, it's on. Okay, so it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Boris Zdrzewski. He will talk about Miles' method, old and new. Thank you very much for this invitation. So uh, this talk will not be about uh, differential algebra, but in a topic in number theory that is uh, closely related to it. So it may be some, other, some motivation to further study in different uh, algebra. Um, so the, the basic question we have so when we work in transcendence theory uh, is to prove uh, transcendence of uh, some complex numbers, and it's quite a hard task. So usually, uh, the number we are interested in are values of some analytic functions uh, at some algebraic point. So you can think about the exponential function, for instance, and the number e. Um, and what is always true is that if you have several analytic functions, let's say uh, f1, from to fn of z, so with algebraic coefficients, so q bar, which means this set of algebraic numbers, as usual, and q bar of z just means functions that are analytic, <coughs> uh, at least around the origin. Um, so if you have such function and if they, are, they satisfy some algebraic or linear relation, um, of course, uh, so if there exists P, let's say, with algebraic coefficient, such that P of F1 and M equals to zero. So if I have such a functional relation, I can always specialize it to some algebraic numbers to get my evaluation alpha to get a relation so alpha I should add a z here alpha not alpha alpha not alpha equal to zero and <clears throat> one major problem in uh, in transcendence is to find situation where we can go in the other direction. So we would like to prove that, for instance, if there is no such relation between the function, then there is no relation between the values. So we want to transfer in the opposite direction. Uh, so when you pick f1, so, so how do you come up with f1 through fm and alpha? What's the, what, what's the guiding principle for you to choose which what these f's are? So it depends. So uh, at first, I should say that uh, people were interested in the case where there is only one function. So yeah, okay. So suppose you have m equals one. So how yeah. would you come yeah. up with an answer? You have a, ah, okay. So it depends on your own interest. So typically, you are uh, interested in uh, some solution of linear differential equations like the exponential function. So people in number theory like the well-known numbers, number e pi log two. So all are related to some classical analytic functions. So now it depends on your taste. We are moving to uh, one framework where perhaps the functions are less known, and I will try to provide some interest for that. So it mm -hmm. depends a little bit on your path, on your um, taste, but also there are some uh, general problems. So at the end of the 19th century, people consider this question in the case m equal 1, for a general function. So they say, if the function is transcendental, is it true that the values are always transcendental at algebraic point? Perhaps except a finite number of exceptions. But uh, the answer to these questions was essentially no. Uh, I mean, there is no uh, good theorem, so both situations may appear. For instance, for the exponential function, this is true. But for other functions, you can always construct functions, even if the questions are in Q. Or even in Z, you can construct functions that are transcendental but take algebraic values at any algebraic point. Any algebraic point? Any algebraic oh. point. Uh, there are a lot of construction like this by people like Urbit, Faber, at the, the end of the, the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. And what's come up is that if you want to say something, you have to impose some kind of functional equation to your function. So if you start with f of z, you will ask that. Uh, f satisfies satisfies the functional equation, and 
by a function of equation, I mean most of the time a linear differential equation or a linear difference equation. Okay. Uh, so now, if you are find a good framework, so a good kind of equation, you may help uh, to prove that if the function is transcendental, it takes essentially transcendental values. But it's not; it will not work for any kind of functional equation. It's really restrictive. Okay. Um, and the other point is that. I, when you start even with one function, imagine that it satisfies a linear differential equation of order n, with, where n is larger than 2. When you will try to prove the transcendence of the values, it turns out you will use this equation, and the values of the other function at the same points will appear into the proof. So finally, if you want to prove the transcendence of f of alpha, you will have to prove a kind of linear independence, at least, or algebraic independence of the values of several functions. So even if you start with one function, many functions will occur, and then you, have, you, you go to this main problem. Okay? So the idea is that... What, what, what you, uh, uh, what you, uh, aren't you uh, actually saying that it will be, that will be sufficient? But, uh, um, or the functions, the extra functions that you come up in that proof yeah. are arbitrary? Are they arbitrary or they are No, typically imagine you I satisfy a linear differential equation, the other function will be the derivative of f. Ah, so, f so, it's, so, so it doesn't mean that you have to solve that problem. No, no, but no. But it's, it's helpful. It means you you want possible. to find a situation where all the functions will be related by some kind of equation, mm -hmm. and in that framework, you will answer the, the problem. So it, it will be more clear in a moment. Okay. So, and so, Maler's method is the ID. So, Maler's method. Such a framework. And essentially, in characteristic zero, the only other case uh, where we have such a nice framework is uh, the theory of P functions that has been initiated by Ziegler and then initiated by Shidovsky. For more recent results, there are also contributions by Andre and Breakers. And uh, the minor theory, at least in one variable I'm going to present, will be in complete analogy uh, with that theory of E function. So we now have obtained all the same results in both theories. So I will describe the Mahler's method, the linear Mahler equation, but Perhaps it will remind you some classical results by these people. Um, so now I can define to be more concrete. Linear model equation. Define what is a linear Mahler equation and first what is a uh, Mahler function. We need a parameter q, which is an integer. Do you mind breaking the chalk? Oh, okay. Oops. So q. Um, Exactly, is equal to 2 is an integer, and f of z, so an analytic function, its algebraic coefficient is q matter function, <coughs> or sometimes I will say just matter function if we don't care about the q, q matter function, if there exists some polynomial. Is zero is a, a, uh, n, is a with algebraic coefficients, and of course not all zero, but that uh, has satisfied a linear difference equation of that type. So we have a zero z f of z is a one. A 
Um, so it's a of uh, transcendence and algebraic independence is that uh, we will not consider some interesting solution of such equation such as so we exclude function like log z Even if they are interested functions that satisfy such a linear equation, but uh, the method really need that the functions are analytic around the origin. Okay. Um, um, what would be a, a good examples of such functions? Yeah, that's good. Thanks. So at this point, I will just first give you. Uh, the most easy example of such function, if you consider f of z the sum over n of the z to the q to the n, uh, it satisfies the equation f of z to is equal to f of z um, So it's, of course, uh, it remains, it's the same to satisfy a homogeneous uh, such equation or inhomogeneous equation. You can go from one to the other uh, if you want. Um, and so the first, uh, perhaps I, it's a good idea to explain briefly what uh, these functions are. So uh, first, so a matter of functions. You can show that it is a meromorphic. Meromorphic in the open unit disk. But uh, the number of poles may be infinite inside this. However, the, the poles are finite in any uh, disk of radius uh, less than one. So if there are infinitely many poles, they only accumulate on the unit circle. And the unit circle, so if f uh, is not a rational function, uh, then uh, the unit circle um, is a natural boundary. That they are quite different from the usual uh, function we are we used to work with. They are very different in some some sense. Uh, so that's why there are not that many examples you you know or you are aware of. But um, this is the point I, that make uh, motivation for me. Uh, and I, but I don't know exactly if I will have time to to develop this. But uh, the point is that um, there is a big family of functions we are very interested in, and that satisfies such equation. So they are connected with uh, automata theory. So just to say briefly, uh, finite automata are machine with a finite number of states that can be used to define uh, some sequences of uh, taking values in a finite alphabet, and they are called automatic sequences. Uh,
automatic sequence. Uh, just uh, may, uh, yeah. So to, to clarify, yeah. So the reason you exclude log is yeah. because it does not satisfy the definition, or because it's uh, for some other like psychological reasons. No, it doesn't satisfy this. That, that's why. So, so the, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. so. Probably because um, here we are not working on different algebra. So uh, I'm just. I really want to prove. A result about the values of such function, and all the theory, just all the argument we have, use really use the fact that we can expand around zero uh, okay, the function. So that's why we. It, it would be really nice uh, if we were able to prove the transcendence of log two using this method, but this will not happen. Okay. Okay. That's the, that's the point. But of course, if you consider this equation from another point of view, now it becomes really natural to consider also this solution. So. You, in some sense. Okay. But in our framework, we just have nothing to say about the values of this function. Okay. So the point is that using a finite state machine, we can produce sequences, and if such sequence it is called automatic, so then if you consider the sum of the a m z to the n, so the generating function associated to this sequence, so is a matter function. For me, this is the main, uh, the main class, uh, the main, important, the most important examples of matter functions. Of course, you can define a lot of infinite products. So, for instance, if you consider the infinite product of just one over um, one minus, let's say, two z to the three to the n, so this also define. Uh, matter function as well. Okay, so it, there are many examples, and of course, matter produces some of them, uh, but really uh, the, the, the interest for, for more important question is related to this connection. So, this connection was given by Alan Coban in 1968. So, he was from, come from computer science, and he discovered that. Uh, this automatic sequence satisfied this kind of equation. He was not aware about the work of Mahler, but he, he, he asked some question I will, I will discuss in a moment about transcendence of their values. Can I ask a yeah. So, and that does matter functions arise as generating series for like maybe counting problems, or it's don't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some. Uh, uh, yeah, there are some connections. So, okay, except automata theory, mm -hmm. there are two other uh, places where this matter function also occurs. So, uh, there are some connection uh, with perhaps not counting problems, but uh, I know that in combinatorics, so they also appear. But this is a point that I never really looked at. But uh, I can give you some reference. So mm -hmm. there are some occurrence of them. But uh, one thing also is that uh, it, they are, it seems to be connected to some of J functions introduced by Ziegel. So uh, it happens. Often that so J functions. J functions. So they are. Um, been introduced by Ziegler, this is a solution of some linear differential equation with some arithmetic condition inside. Um, and I know that in particular some algebraic functions are the algebraic functions are G functions. <coughs> and um, I don't know uh, the X yeah C I think but for instance if you consider this elliptic function the sum of the two n and square x to the n So if this is, I should put in the So if I choose f of z, this g function. So I think that if you consider uh, only the uh, periodic valuation of this coefficient, so now if you consider the sum of the new p 
but this is a prime number of the children and square. Is it to the end? So is it the P minus function? Hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems it's not true in general. It does not hold for all G functions, but we have a lot of examples where such things appear. So you have some pro some pro coefficient that uh, counts something. In that case, mm -hmm. it counts on the lattice pass on C2. Uh, and this periodic valuation then connect you to Mahler theory. But for me, I will try to, to explain you that, but it's uh, mm -hmm. the main connection comes from this automata theory. But you, if you take a G function, yeah, can you find criteria that will say that it has to be Mahler? No, it seems. Uh, no, I'm not sure. It seems to be a little bit uh, tricky to get uh, mm -hmm. this kind of this kind of information. But at least I can produce a number of examples. So it, it seems to be for me an interesting question. So what what we know is uh, uh, the only uh, general things we know is that. If you don't consider uh, G functions, but only diagonal of rational functions, you know what, what it is, um, then if they have integer coefficient and you reduce them mod P, then the reduction mod P uh, satisfies such an uh, equation over FP. So, in all cases. So, the, the, the real result is that a diagonal of rational function mod P are algebraic function. An algebraic function over FP are exactly this function with Q equal P. There is a correspondence between uh, algebricity and uh, to be a Mahler function over FP. So this is it has nothing to do with transcendence now, but it's also a nice connection where this function uh, appear natural. Could you clarify that statement? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the claim is it's a Mahler function. Is this exactly the definition? Or it, it satisfies a part of the conditions for the definition? No, 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 no. Uh, it satisfies all the definitions. Oh, so I, I can give you analytic. Maybe I can give you one example. It's, it's also it's guaranteed to be analytic? Uh, yeah, because you because just... Numbers it, it, the number ah, okay, of values so is finite. Okay. So the automaton has only a finite number of states. So let us give you a classical example. So two more sequences. So, a uh, finite automata, I just define it on this example, so you have a finite number of states, so in that case you have only two states, that I call A and B. So one of the states has to be the intro states, which means that it's a kind of machine that can read integers when they are written in some given base. So and the reading starts from the state A. So here, the integer will be read in base 2. So when I'm in one state, I can either read a 0 or a 1. So I read a 0, I stay in A, and if I read a 1, I move to B. And from B, I do the same thing. So if I read a 0, I don't move. And if I read a 1, I move to A. So, and then, so with this, you can imagine that if you give me an integer in base 2, this is a finite string of 0 and 1, I can correspond to a unique path in this other matter. I will hand either on A and on B. If I am in A, I put a 0, and if I am in B, I get a, I get a 1. Okay. So the sequence produced by this machine will be uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And it's called the Chumo sequence, so it's a binary sequence. And uh, the nth term of this sequence, so am, is uh, the sum of the digits of the binary, binary digits of n uh, mod 2. So, in other, um, in other words, uh, so the, if you give an integer n, it will count if the uh, number of 1 is odd or even. So you can really check that if the number of 1 is even, you will have 2n in state A, if it's odd in state B. Now if you consider the generating series associated with that, you get m of z to the sum of the an z to the n. 
and now we can show that it satisfies a Mahler equation. So, uh, so it's in Z of G of Z. The coefficient takes only the value zero and one. And if I consider uh, the sum, I can split it in into the old and even part. So uh, I can say that f of g is the sum of the a to n z to n plus the sum of the a to n plus 1 z to n plus 1. Okay? So what is a to n? If I have an integer n written base 2, 2n has the same expansion, adding a zero, so it doesn't change uh, if this sum of the binary digits, so it's just an. So this gives me f of z2. Uh, a to n plus 1, I've added 1, so it's 1 minus an. So I get uh, 1 minus an, so the 1 gives me a geometric series, so I get z of 1 minus a squared. Uh, 1 minus a n, so minus uh, a n, so I will get z f of z2. And uh, I get my equation, my Mahler equation. Uh, so, as you see, it's a two Mahler equation, uh, and not a q Mahler equation. So, why it is a two? The two comes from the fact that here things are written in base 2. If I choose an automaton uh, that read inputs in base k, I will get a k matter function. That's the connection. Okay? So this proof, you can mimic it uh, almost. It gives you the, the global proof of that fact. Okay? Um, okay. Can you, is there an algorithm to decide on the, what, what equation will be in general? Sorry? Is there an algorithm to decide what the equation will be? To decide what? The equation that will satisfy, the matter equation that will satisfy. Given an automaton? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, given an automaton, is that. A, uh, I would say yes, but uh, I have to check. So the general idea is that with uh, finite automata, every theorem. Uh, uh, really concrete, so you, you can always uh, do it concretely. Uh, so I would say yes, but uh, I, I would also have to, to check it, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Um, but at least it's not hard to prove uh, the theoretical result that it exists. So, so the, uh, for Q, the finite state automata would have Q states? No, it's not a number, it's not the Q has nothing to do with the number of states. Ah, no, no. It has to do with uh, the base right. in which... But what do you output? The output? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The so output has nothing to do. Zero imagine, and imagine so with 0 and 1. So I would perfectly could do that. So I can add the C. If I read a 1 and say perhaps a, a 1 here and say a 0 here. Now I have a three, it's still a two automaton because it's still read in base two, but it has three states. And I can choose that C is sending to something else, maybe again a zero, or maybe pi. <laughs> it's up to you. So it's just the, out, the output I can put here a zero. So the number of states has just to do with the complexity of the computation you are doing. And the Q, or the Q automatic, is related to the input base. That's a connection. Um, okay, but, so... But out, uh, output base might be different from input base. Yeah, uh, there, there is no real uh, uh, output base, so there is <laughs> output function, so you, you put values. Ah, okay, because you, 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 you ask some values, mm -hmm. but there is no real uh, output base, so there is only the input base, and then uh, you associate with any natural number, some values on a, in a finite set oh, okay. of symbol. So, um, and when I say that it is a matter function with that definition, so I assume that the output 
belongs to Cuba. Ah, true. Okay, that's so the only restriction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I think. Mm -hmm. And the number of terms would, uh, in, in the in the functional equation, would be what? The number of terms uh, in the functional equation. So the order of the functional equation. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think this one this one is related to to, to the size of the automaton to the number of states. Oh, the number of states. Yeah, but again, uh, there is no. Uh, if you want to produce one sequence, you can do that with perhaps several different automata. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. and if you have a solution of one equation, you have perhaps solution to other equation. So, but you can speak about the minimal automaton. Mm -hmm. The automaton with a yeah. minimal number of states, and as well you can speak about the minimal equation, mm -hmm. where the order is minimal. So, so and they are probably somehow connected. So the uh, yeah, the, say the uh, automata uh, yeah. recognizes language usually, right? Yeah, regular language regular exactly. Language. So would that be associated with languages yeah. then? Can you? Yeah, yeah sure. Is that saying automata? Imagine that. So, yeah. what is the so here we use the automaton to produce a sequence. Right. But this automaton, so not that one. But you, you can give a language. The one I erased. Yeah. So it's also recognized a language. So the language are, imagine you have 0, 1, the old zone. So now I put the, the expansion base 2 of 0, of 1, and so on. So for 0, I get 0. So it's 1 now. For 1, I get 1. Uh, for 2, uh, I get uh, one zero for three. I get one zero one, and so on. And so now you have a set of words, and where the place where you have a one, it means that uh, the, these are the words that the machine has accepted. Mm -hmm. What is the language yeah. produced by the machine? So the language accepted is a, the set of strings. that um, uh, the number of one in the string uh, is all. And this is a regular language that is recognized by this machine. Right. Okay, so there is a finite automaton you write, you can use in both ways, either to recognize a language, but for me, even, it will be to recognize a set of natural numbers. Mm -hmm. Instead of a language, so I move to this world as thinking to them as numbers, natural numbers, and I can also use it to produce a sequence. And for me, I will think about producing a real number. So, a real number. A real number. Yeah, so for instance, I, I will see this as a binary expansion of a real number. And uh, for the application, the both directions are very uh, important. and. Uh, this is uh, quite nice to have this both way. Set of natural numbers, and on the other end, some real numbers. Okay? Um, so now I have to move on and to give you um, the main results about this equation. So, first, uh, I should give you a very, very brief. Uh, history. So, because I mentioned Mara's method, but um, Mara's method uh, does not really start with this linear equation. So, it started with three papers in Mara's in 1999 uh, and 1930. Um, and in Mara's work, Uh, so he considered um, only order uh, one equation. Um, perhaps inhomogeneous, but he also consider more general equation, not only linear. So he consider also some polynomial equation. We also consider uh, equation in several variables. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so after Mallow's paper, yeah, so Mallow's papers are in German and they were totally forgotten. Uh, he didn't uh, have a lot of success with his paper, as is mentioned at several uh, places, um, because at exactly at the same time, Ziegler started his theory of E functions, and it was much more attractive because it implies transcendence of number E and pi, and uh, the lindemann bierstrass theorem. So, and as you've already seen, there were not so much examples of this matter function. So this, it was completely forgotten, and uh, it re restarted, yeah? Was that before automata theory? Yeah, so grossly automata theory uh, emerged right? in the 50s yeah, right. and uh, really take a stronger form in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was before, so the connection was not there, mm -hmm. and so uh, Manos had in, in mind uh, some application perhaps for the uh, modular invariant, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the method failed with the result he would like to prove, so basically he had not so many examples. Uh, he had many examples, but so many uh, very interesting examples. So he says that, for instance, Lando was not very impressed by his results. And it's a shame, because it was one of the first uh, general results in transcendence theory. So that applies to a large class of functions. But still, it was uh, not so popular at that time. So it was forgotten uh, until 1969. And Mala also was really young when he writes this down, uh, so it was not that well known. Uh, but in 1969, he restarts his theory because he, he sees that uh, some uh, guys reprove some, really partially, some of his results. So in the first volume of the Journal of Number Theory, uh, he write a paper saying, OK, in the 1999, uh, I prove a number of results that maybe could be interesting to look at it, and to uh, ask for three main problems from in this method, so he doesn't call it Mallow's method at the time. Um, so the, the, the method restarts. And then up to 1996, uh, there are a lot of work. Uh, essentially, it started by Kubota. and Van der Potten. And there's an initial cap. And Massa. Massa for the main results obtained in this period. And uh, then there, there are some other results, but it really, uh, there, there is a renewed interest from the just last few years. So now, uh, last few years. There are many works on this uh, Mahler function and uh, Mahler equation. So, from the perspective of transcendence, so there are works by Philippon, I'm going to mention. And uh, some works, uh, joint work uh, with Colin Favergeon and myself. Um, so essentially, you should see that uh, all what I proved so far, uh, <coughs> not concerning Mahler function, but uh, concerning Mahler's method, that is transcendence of the, or algebraic independence of their values, uh, comes from joint works I started a few years ago with, with Colin Favachon. Um, and uh, on, a, on another line, there are some work, work by Julien Roque, um, uh, Chef Q and Singer. And I know that for the polynomial equation, there are some work of uh, ongoing works of uh, MD and uh, Medvedev and Scanlon. So uh, all these works are only concerned with. Uh, the solution of the equations or the relation between the functions, so more difference Galois theory. Um, and uh, these are concerned with uh, the, the values. Okay.
but the middle period from 69 to 96, it was from aut automaton theory perspective or from transcendence theory? Yeah, so what happened is a bit strange, but actually in 1960, so there is this contribution by Alan Cobham, who makes a connection with automata theory. But the point is that uh, Cobham was in computer science, he was working at IBM, um, and uh, he, he he was considering uh, one problem uh, about the complexity of uh, numbers when you write them, say in base 10 numbers, I mean like square root of 2 or pi. Uh, and there is a problem in computer science called the Hartman distance problems, which is a quite old question. Uh, and he, he would like to uh, restrict it to a simple class of Turing machine, and he chose automata as a simple class of Turing machine. Um, so Cobham uh, just say, okay, he realized that uh, the generating series associated to automata satisfies this kind of equation, but he didn't know about Mahler's works. And he just say, oh, it really looks like E functions, because he had a book from, uh, I think, Gelfond or Schneider, mm -hmm. probably Gelfond, in which uh, the theory of E function is explained. He say, oh, it really looks like the same, so probably I, we could obtain the same results. So he proved something on one example, and then he claimed uh, some very general results that now become some conjecture, and which have recently been proved. But he was not aware of Mahler's work. And on the opposite direction, so Mahler was not aware of that guy, <laughs> because he was in computer science. And the, the point where the theory met together, so it was due by uh, Michel Mendes France, who recently passed away. Uh, at the end of the 70s, he, he is a nervous theorist, and he started to be interested in automata because he, he followed the lectures on automata theory in Paris. And he, he became aware of the work of Cobham, but he also was a great friend of Lawson and Van der Potten. So he told them, you should solve this question. <laughs> And the theory restart like this. So after that time, so really the linear equation uh, take more importance, uh, also because it really look like uh, E functions, and uh, because of this connection with um, automata theory. And all this guy tried to prove some results confirming the claim of Cobalt. But I, I will perhaps have time to explain that they essentially fail. They prove only prove partial results, and only the result in the last line uh, had to solve the question, finally. Uh, okay, so that was just for the history. Now I'm going to give you the main results concerning this linear equation. Um, to state the results, the first main result, uh, we need to speak about the singularity of the equation. So you should be familiar with that. So singularity, oh, okay. So first, uh, okay. sorry. So the, the first thing is that, as usual, we will move from uh, a linear equation to uh, system of equation. So we will consider the equation sigma q of y is equal to a z y and I call it star and the matrix of the equation is an element in z and m of q power z. So it has a rational function as coefficient and uh, as usual, with difference equation, we have that it is invertible. Okay. So, um, so to, to work about this function, with the results are uh, given in terms of this system. And um, of course, you can go from one to the other quite easily. And um, the singularity. So, singularity. so you, you allow rational, rational functions? You allow, sorry? Rational functions? Yes. And actually, if you want to start from this and to write it into systems, 
you will get some uh, using the companion matrix. You will oh, get okay. some rational right. functions okay. uh, already. But here we already consider a general matrix with rational function. The set of singularities is defined as uh, the number alpha, which will be algebraic, such that um, uh, there exists some natural number such that alpha to the q to the n, so the nth iterate of alpha by the transformation uh, is a whole of a um, <coughs> Z, which means a pole of one of the coefficients, or of a minus one of the and usually, uh, maybe we'll be shocked with that, but I will have zero as a singularity. Because from the perspective of transcendence, of course, because the function is analytic at the origin, it takes an algebraic value at zero, so it's the first coefficient. So I want to see zero as a singular point. It's not a regular point from the point of view of transcendence, but it's just notational. Um, so again, I say uh, this set is now maybe infinite, and it is usually infinite, uh, but it's finite in any uh, disk uh, of radius smaller than one. Okay, so it makes a difference with the linear differential equation as a set of singularities is just finite. So now, once you have this definition, uh, you have the theorem put by Michelle. So it's interesting to note that it was obtained only in 1990, so quite far after uh, Chilovsky completed the, the proof of the theorem of Ziegler and Chilovsky, uh, but it's really, this is the same result. So um, let us assume that F1, Fm, Z is an analytic vector solution of the system star. Um, and then alpha, an algebraic number, uh, where the function may be defined. So what is this? 0 and 1. Um, alpha regular, so regular point, point which is not singular. Uh, then, Uh, the transcendence degree of a cube of the number f1 of alpha, fn of alpha, so which means, as you know, as maximum number of algebraic independent numbers in this set, uh, is equal to the transcendence degree of a cube of the, of the function of So, of course, um, if, as I said, if the function has some relation, the values will have some relation. So the values have at least the, may have more relation than the function. So what is all, always true is that the transcendence degree is small or equal. So really, the theorem is converse inequality that there is no more relation. It's kind of uh, first wonderful results that translate uh, relation between the values to relation between the function, which was uh, the goal I mentioned at the very beginning. But also you have to keep in mind that it's only a quantitative result. So you just say there is no more relation on one side than on the other. So if you think about, um, uh, say, in terms of ideal of relation, for instance, if you think about commutative algebra, it's just the equality between uh, the rank of two ideas, not the equality between two ideas. OK, so it's something like that. So it's just, uh, we say it's a quantitative solution. The equality of ideals is not known or is not true? Uh, not 
what is equality of ideas? The, the main things you, you have to prove. So here you have the ideas of relation between mm -hmm. the function, and here the ideas of relation between the values. The best you can accept, expect is that uh, if you evaluate here yeah, an alpha, uh, then you get the idea at alpha. Mm -hmm. And this is essentially true. This will be the next ah, result. Okay. Right? Okay. But, uh, that, is, that will be the qualitative statement okay. mm -hmm. I'm going to, to, to explain you. But at this point, so first, really, if you know it, it's exactly the ziegler chilovsky theorem for, for the Mahler equation. Okay, so exactly the same result. But um, what does this result solve? So it solves completely the question. So this is something easy, but that has not been, seems not be mentioned anywhere, even in the case of E function. So this solves uh, the case of all of one equation. Do you remember what, uh, in what journal this result was published? Uh, the, the theorem of Nishoka mm -hmm. uh, in Krell journal. Um, in, in, this theor in this theorem, the, the F1 of the FM need not be uh, the sigma Q transforms of a single F, or is it? F1 of the FM. So they are a vector solution right. to the solution to the equation. The no, not to the equation to the linear system I erased. So the matrix system. Oh, oh the y, the y. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Oh, but if you right. uh, if you start with one equation, so it will be f of z, f of z q up to <coughs> f of z to the q to the m minus one, maybe right vector oh, solution yeah. for the equation. Um, so all the one possibly inhomogeneous. Uh, why? Because uh, if I have another one equation, uh, you can check easily the, that the following happen. So if f of e is transcendental, and I should say that uh, for Mahler function, we know that they are either rational function or transcendental. I already mentioned that if they are not rational, the unit circle is a boundary, which implies, of course, that they are transcendental. So if I assume that the solution, so I have an order one equation, so I have a one by one matrix, or no, perhaps it's homogeneous. So um, if the function is transcendental, then I have the following dichotomy. So f of alpha is transcendental, if alpha is regular. Okay. Because I have one function which is transcendental, transcendental degrees one, here one number, transcendental degrees one. And, but also, I have alpha of alpha is algebraic. If alpha is singular. So, theorem give a complete picture even for singular points. You can check by hand that this is well the case. But the second assertion will, is no more true. Uh, actually, none of this assertion is true uh, if um, I consider equation of order more than one. The only thing I will have is I have several functions here. If I just start with the, my uh, Mahler function and I know that it is transcendental, I include it into a large system, okay, and then I know that here because f1, so my function is transcendental, transcendental degree is at least one. So on the left, I know that between several numbers, there is at least one transcendental number. But I have no way to know which one. Okay. And also for the second comment, uh, I can produce example of order more than one, uh, which take transcendental values at some singular point. So really, this theorem gives a complex picture only for order one possibly inhomogeneous equation. Okay, and the, the the deficiency of this theorem is exactly what I mentioned. So if I only I'm interested in the transcendence of one function of one values um, starting from one function, now in the system other function will appear, and I only will know that one number among several is transcendental. Um, so then. It motivates uh, the study of uh, uh, 
difference Galois theory for, for these equations because uh, using that, sometimes you can pr prove, for instance, that uh, the functions are algebraically independent. So in that case, the transcendence degree is maximum, and then all the numbers are, are algebraically independent. In particular, the number you are interested in has to be transcendent. Okay? But the point is that we are studying linear equations, linear systems. There is no way to ensure that the transcendence degree will be m in general. It will be uh, perhaps a generic case but it's not true always. It's not always true. Okay. So if you are interested in a given example, in a given system, then you can try to use uh, difference Galois theory and try to prove that the function have no relation or to find the relation between the function. But if you want to speak in general, the only thing you can do is to say that I, if I start with one function, I can always put it into a system where the other function will be linearly independent by considering the minimal equation. Okay, so what we know in advance is we can always put one function into a system with linearly independent coordinates, but not with algebraically independent coordinates. And this is exactly what this theorem missed. Okay, you really need algebraic independence to say something in, in the general case. So is there anything to do with uh, what model theory is called geometric triviality? Uh, I don't know what oh, right. geometric triviality is. Roughly, I know a little bit about model theory. Roughly, so. I think it says that if you have some, I mean, if you have that property, uh, using some trichotomy, then um, the, the independence, or rather the dependence of n functions, is actually coming from pairwise. Only two. Well, for, first, oh. you, so I can speak to that if you want. But first, you would need to know, for example, ah, what. Here. I, was, I was wondering. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. that's right. You should ask the question. You, you have to wonder whether the, the linear equations or the equations ah. to start with are uh, what we call strongly minimal. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not in you know, one case, linear equations won't fit in the setting of being minimal. Okay. Right, so yeah. not, not uh, exactly. you, you yeah. cannot expect that the, the relation between this function are only pairwise, if okay. I understand what, that, okay. what it means. So you can build an example where uh, you will have relation implying all the yeah. functions. Okay. Um, what about this uh, order one statement? Yeah. Um, so you say it doesn't generalize to higher orders. Yeah. Does it generalize to uh, f's? those functions that are obtained by some procedure. For example, this automatic, no, from the term. Um, no, but I will, uh, uh, I'm going to give one more statement, and after that, probably I could shed some light on, on your questions. Okay, I keep this in mind, and I'm going to try to explain the situation because now it's kind of clear what will happen. So, uh, so the next step, so that was the where the theory was in the nineties, and um, uh, because of the limitation I mentioned, so it means so typically when you start the question related to automata, ask things like, is it true that uh, if I start from any automaton, I, I get a sequence, uh, and I want to prove that the corresponding real numbers, if I view it as written in some base, say base 10, um, I want to prove that if it's not a rational number, which may sometimes happen, it should be transcendental. So in that case, you start with an automata, but you just know that there exists an automaton, you don't know what automaton it is, so you get an equation, but you don't know the equation. And from just this knowledge, you want to prove that the values at some rational point is either rational or transcendental. So you don't have the system. So you can really use this. This is a limitation. Okay? And the, what I'm going to say now will exactly solve this point. So the second result. So uh, I call this phenomenon. Try to permanence, explain why. 
Um, so it's due essentially to an intervention I gave, so there is also, it has been completed, so it's 15 by myself and Fabien Jean. But the main part here is due to Philip. Uh, he says the following uh, thing, so I keep all the notation here, um, and again, alpha is a regular point, so the theorem says that uh, P is a polynomial in M variable such that it produces a relation between my values at one of alpha and M of alpha. Uh, then uh, there exists another polynomial Q with an extra variable z says so that um, so I should say here so I was going to write the version of silicon but uh, I will assume that stronger version that the relation here is homogeneous strongly enough uh, it's uh, harder to prove the homogeneous case and the inhomogeneous case, and you can always reduce the homogeneous to inhomogeneous uh, by adding a function 1 to your system, you get, can get it for free. Then there is there exists such polynomials which is homogeneous in x1, xm, and that satisfies the following two conditions, so q of z, f1 of z, of z is zero, so it provides a relation uh, between the functions. But more than this, if I special, specialized z equal to alpha and keep the variable here, I get p of x1. So, in other words, it says that any relation between the numbers. Uh, can be lived to a relation between the functions, and then the re functional relation uh, gives the number relation by specialization. It's like the best you can hope, I think, um, yeah, in this uh, in this setting. So it really takes care of any relation. So that's why it's no more quantitative statement, but qualitative statement. And. Uh, you can rephrase it as a, an equality between the, the ideas I mentioned. Okay. Uh, I should say that for E functions, exactly the same result has been proved in 206 by uh, uh, Fritz Beukers using uh, some theory of uh, Yves André on the E operators. And again, it has been reproved by André by other means uh, using a kind of new uh, differential Galois theory. In a paper he published in the <coughs> analytic of the normal superior in uh, 2012, and uh, the, the breakers papers in is in the annals uh, in 2006. Um, so, so now we know that uh, it's quite natural to go from this equality of transforms way to to these results, and using some rather basic facts from. Uh, commutative algebra, you can actually do, do, do that. Um, but now, uh, why is this result is uh, very interesting? Uh, because first, there is this evident corollary that if f1 of z, f1 of z are linearly independent on the rational function, then the values are linearly independent. Uh, 
here, I didn't mention, but uh, it follows from uh, Nishoka's theorem that alpha is always a regular point for the system. Okay. So it takes care of the linear relation. So essentially, the corollary is essentially the, as the same for as the world theorem. Um, so it was one of the main questions, for instance, for E-function, it was quite a long-standing problem, so by Bakers. Uh, and so now what you can do is that if you are interested in a single function, a matter of function, that, for instance, comes from an automata, uh, you can say, OK, it satisfies some minimal equation, even a minimal inhomogeneous equation. So I have some system, including my function, the function 1, and other function that are linearly independent. So at all regular points, one f of alpha and the other numbers will be linearly independent. In particular, f of alpha will be transcendental. So it's half of, the, of what we want. So it solves the question for, except for, for singular points, but the singularities are in a system that I don't know. <laughs> So that's a, li a little problem. So uh, I know that uh, there, there is this dichotomy now between transcendence and singular point, but I, in general, if I don't know the automaton, I don't know the set of singular points. But still, uh, starting from this theorem, so with, with Father Jean, we, we prove the following uh, two results. Um, Hard to prove. Actually, we already proved this result before the theorem exists uh, because we tried to prove at that time exactly this theorem but for function in several variables. And uh, we actually proved it but with some restriction of the, the class of, the, of matrices uh, that the system will satisfy. So we were trying to prove the complete things. And at that time, Philippon comes with this theorem, but we already had the application in mind. So this is why uh, we, we obtain this quite quickly. And um, so the, the theorem is that now let f of e be a matter of function. That is well defined. So, because alpha may be a call of f, okay. So, then, uh, oh, okay, and I should say that I consider a matter function. So, this is something that is also true uh, in the case. Of uh, linear differential equation, so the solution uh, I has to have coefficient in, a, in this field of algebraic numbers. But actually, if it is true, uh, the coefficients are always confined in a given number field, so we cannot expand. So it comes from the relation. You <coughs> so let us call k this number field. So then. We have the following dichotomy. So either f of alpha belong to the field k of alpha extended, or f of alpha is transcendental. Uh, so now you see in this results that. Uh, there is only one function uh, with just its matter function, so which means q matter for some q. Uh, I ask it is transcendental, but so this can be checked easily. Uh, and there is no mention of uh, regularity or singularity. So if the function is defined, I have this dichotomy. Okay, and uh, so this is exactly the statement uh, that Coban, this guy from computer science. Um, conjecture uh, in 1968 without providing 
proof, uh, but you have the intuition that this was the correct statement. Um, and this is really what we need for the one of the applications to, to automata theory. So now, starting from any automata, I consider the generating series. If the sequence is not periodic, then the function will be transcendental. So if I plug here a rational, so I will have only a finite number of coefficients which are integer, for instance. So if I plug a rational number, because if I want to see it in base, say, 10, I will evaluate the function at the point 1 over 10. Uh, so the dichotomy will be, k of alpha will be only q, so I get either a rational number or a transcendental number. Okay, so this is really what uh, we need. And uh, the other main uh, implication of this permanence phenomenon, so uh, I choose the word permanence because it, it really says that one consequence is that if you have a relation at one point, then you have a similar relation at any point. So that's that name. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, algorithm. So finally, um, there will exist an algorithm such that uh, given a matter function. So finally, this results uh, allow to produce an algorithm that reduces the question of transcendence of values to uh, routine computation. So I didn't uh, uh, really implement such an algorithm. It's kind of ongoing works, but it's not really my part to do that. Uh, and I should mention that these two results are also true if you replace matter function by E functions. Uh, in, for the algorithm, this is a recent result I, I write down uh, with Tanguy uh, but they again are a consequence of the, the, this result for E function due, due to breakers. Uh, so actually, what is the meaning of given matter function? So it just means you give one equation, not necessarily the minimum one, uh, and enough uh, coefficient of your series so that it is uniquely defined. And then the algorithm will first check whether the function is transcendental or not. And uh, if you give alpha, it, it will check whether uh, alpha is a pole or not. And if it's not a pole, if the function is well defined, it will produce the values if it's algebraic, or it will say it is transcendental if it is the case. And roughly, the idea is ready to go from a general equation to prove that you can always compute the minimal equation, the inhomogeneous minimal equation. And once you have the minimal, in, the minimal inhomogeneous equation, almost everything is done. So I can just briefly tell you how it works. Um, so, may I clarify? So the algorithm does, given some equation and first coefficients, it computes minimal equation. Yeah, that's one uh, first part. Of well, one step, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the idea is that once you have the minimal equation concretely, mm -hmm. so you already have computed it, what happens for the minimal equation? So um, first, if the point is regular, it's not a one point minimal equation, so you already know that the function is the value is transcendental. Mm -hmm. Because the functions are linearly independent, and you add the function one because you are in the inhomogeneous case. So you only have to deal with the singularity. The idea is really easy. So the, the, the point is that imagine that alpha is singular for a given minimal system. Uh, so what you are doing is I have a system, say f of z is az. Uh, yeah, I turn it a minus 1. Turn it this way. Okay, so it's a column vector. Um, so now what I can do is I can iterate this. 
or y. So I will get something like uh, an d z to the q n. Well, this is a product of the matrix uh, a z a z q a z q squared. So okay. Um, so now. Uh, if I look at the point alpha, this system at the point alpha, at alpha, uh, I have here the function, vector function at the point alpha to the q to the n. So it's really close to zero now. And uh, as I say, this, it cannot be a singularity anymore if I have iterated uh, sufficiently enough. So I start from this situation, so I have one singularity, mm -hmm. but I know that around zero there is no singularity. So I push the point inside. But now, uh, if uh, so, the vector f of alpha q to the n, because alpha q to the n is not singularity, so the coordinates are linearly independent by the CN. Okay. So it means that uh, if I have a relation at alpha, so it means that there is some vector such that the scalar product is f of alpha is equal to zero. So I can use that to say that I have something like lambda uh, an minus one alpha uh, f of alpha q n. But if, if it's singularity, then this am of alpha might be not well defined. Uh, it will be, actually, if um, if f, you can use the fact that f is defined at alpha ah, so that's to, show, what, mm -hmm. to show that there will be no problem for the matrix to be defined. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. uh, so when you split it like this, because the coordinates are linearly independent, mm -hmm. so this has to be zero. Mm -hmm. So now your lambda, so which gives you the, the relation, the coefficient of the linear relation, uh, is in the kernel of this matrix. So if you want to check a transonance, for instance, it's like asking whether there is some vector lambda of the form 1, beta, 0, 0, 0 uh, in this kernel. If I assume that uh, in the system the first function is 1, the second is your function f, and then you have the other. Uh, this is something you can, uh, there are algorithms to check that, so to check whether there is uh, an eigen vector of that form. Mm -hmm. In the can, okay. so it gives you the, uh, the idea of what. So uh, either there is no such vector, okay. so the function then the value is transcendental. If there is such a vector, it gives you the relation, and b is the values of, the, of your function. So uh, yeah, the point is that uh, I should say okay. We, we will read the question to know whether there is a vector in the left kernel of this matrix, but the matrix. It is defined on the small field. Right, right. So if it has a, one thing in the kernel, it has one thing with beta in this k of alpha. Mm -hmm. So it will give ah, you... And, and beta is guaranteed to be my, my, my value of my function. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So and it's true in general for any linear relation. So uh, I call this descent or fall. I don't know what is a good term in, in English. But it means that if you have a linear relation between the values with algebraic coefficients, actually there exists a linear relation, a non-trivial linear relation with coefficient in the smaller field. Exactly for the same reason. Okay. Um, well, uh, I can, uh, I don't know what you want <laughs> to do now. We can have a break and, and uh, also continue in the afternoon. It's fine for me. It's a good place to makes a break now. Okay, we'll stop then. Okay. Thank you then. Thank you. More questions? Any result in the nonlinear nonlinear equations or nonlinear? Uh, no, the point is that um, it's hard for me to to evaluate the, the difficulty of, of the argument. So the, the point is, everything that has been done so far for nonlinear equation uh, is restricted to order one. So you, you, you only apply the operator one time. Uh, and it's 
simplify a lot of things. So for instance, here, if you reduce to order one, things are really, really easier. So the linear equation is like the, the first case where we can go outside this order one. Uh, so we can really deal with something general. Uh, and this is a price to pay, I, I, I would say. Um, but of course, there are many <laughs> interesting questions for other kind of equation. And also because my motivation uh, comes from this uh, automata theory counterpart. Uh, really, the, the linear equation is exactly what we, we want to, to understand. And, uh, and really, there is also this connection. So all the, main, the results I mentioned have a counterpart for E functions. So we are really two theory that are in total correspondence, even if the functions are not at all the same. So E functions are entire functions. Mm -hmm. While these are really different, but the theory produces exactly the, the same results. But I, I should say one thing that um, there is, for instance, a paper by Andre uh, saying that for a system of E functions, so the singularities are either zero or infinity, the other singularities are only apparent. Uh, and uh, to deal with the general matter equation, seems to be a little bit harder from this point of view. It's not exactly clear what would, could be done in general. So there, there are these works of uh, Julien Roque, who put the pay of theory, but uh, we, we have some, uh, some trouble. And uh, the, the work I have with Father Jean, uh, which concerns the same thing, but with several variables, um, is reduced to uh, the case of regular singular systems, so which you can perhaps imagine <laughs> what, what, is, what it means. And really, we are stuck with that. Uh, if, if there is a, a if the thing is too wide in zero, uh, we, we don't know how to make the argument work. And this provides some limitations. Mm -hmm. For application to automata, because we we don't know, for instance, if you start with one automata, one equation, we don't know anything about the kind of singularities this equation may have or not at this point. So it will be interesting to make some progress, but still you have to keep in mind that um, even if it's a small word, uh, when you don't know anything about your automaton. Um, it's quite, uh, it should really look, uh, in some sense, like the general equation. Of course, we know that the, the values take only, uh, coefficient take only finitely many values, so maybe this can be used, but uh, I don't really see how to uh, attack the question without solving general so, problems. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, if I go from like regular like languages to some, uh, Wider class like context-free grammars, are there similar results that generating functions will be milder in some sense? No, it was. Uh, it's not completely clear to me. So it has been uh, suggested in some uh, work of Loxton and von der Potten that um, when you work with several variables, it would be a way. To, so, uh, if you solve this kind of equation like this mm -hmm. with several variables, the, one of the main points is you get a function in several variables. Right. But then you can make some specialization of this function to get new function in one variable. And these functions are more general than just uh, the solution of the one, one variable equation. So, you, you complete, uh, you enlarge the set of functions you. you be able to work with. And uh, Luxon and Van der Potten, they mentioned the fact that um, for um, uh, push down automata, so which correspond to um, uh, context free grammar, uh, there should be a connection. And I've tried to think a little bit about that, and I didn't really understand what they have in mind. But for example, if, if I go to nonlinear equations, can I maybe describe? Context-free context -free grammars, where it's 
And it's just my wild guess. I have no, no idea. I would say uh, my first idea would be, as uh, the first intuition, I should say, uh, would be that the, the, to enlarge the number of vibrators is a good way to have more uh, function in terms of uh, this computing, uh, computer science side than to look at more general equations. But maybe you're right. I, I didn't really start, actually I have some work uh, uh, so uh, this allows to prove that if a uh, sequence is generated like the tumor sequence by a finite automaton, it is the number corresponding numbers in base two or ten is either rational or transcendental, mm -hmm. um, and this result now can be proved by Mahler's method. But one thing I didn't say is that uh, the result was first proved uh, in some joint work of myself and Yann Bujot. Uh, in 2007 by Ozamin mm. using the some diophantine metal for the subspace theorem um, and using the same method that is a subspace theorem uh, mm. I, with uh, Marion Le Bonitech and Julien Cassaigne we, we, we extend this kind of results to some push down automaton so we we add a memory to the to the automaton in some way and we say, is it still true that the number of produce I are either rational or transcendental? We get some results like this, but not using Mahler's method. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really start to think about Mahler's method, application of Mahler's method in, in, in this way. So because uh, all this is quite recent, so I didn't have really time to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I cannot have a definitive answer to, to your question. Okay, thank you. Questions? Well, thank you.